Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and let's talk about Ulta Labs. Now, first, full disclosure up front, this was sent to me. Now, sending things to me does not mean I will even review it, and it certainly doesn't mean I am forced in any way or compelled to say nice things. I will do an honest review based on my content ethics policy, which is linked down below. I've always been very clear and upfront about that. It's on my site. It's linked to my YouTube. Coming back over here to Ulta, though, I did do a shorts video because I wanted to cue the audience. I wanted you to have a voice, and that comment section actually really led to Ulta kind of opening their eyes. So let's rewind this a little bit. I've done a video on it. Chris from Crosstalk did a video on it. And my video is just a short. Chris did a really good in-depth review. And I agree with all Chris's findings in that video. Those are linked down below. But let's talk about how this product got into my hands. And this starts several weeks, actually almost months ago now from the time of recording this video here in June of 2023. And I did do some testing after they sent me these devices. They send these devices to us prior to them being available in the market because they're looking for opinions from people like me and Chris and others want to know, hey, how do these hold up? How do these perform? So we did our testing on them. But the conversation I had with the people, I seen that email and say, okay, a new contender, new product in the market and has self-hosted. But then when I talked to them, self-hosted was something they're thinking about and tossing it around the actual one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. I told them it was really important to the community and I want to reiterate the community's feelings and my feelings as well, that yes, we want a self-hosted system. And they said, well, we'll work on it. You know, we have this free cloud and it's really cool. And hey, we'll talk about the dashboard in a minute. I think they did a nice job on it, but the locally hosted controller. Let's get back to that. They didn't really think it is a priority, but after reading the comment section, they reached out to both me and Chris. Chris had an update to his video and I haven't did the video yet, so I'm excited to say they are putting it much faster on the roadmap. Now, that means for some of you, maybe you don't want to buy it until that's on the roadmap, but this is how we as a community vote with our dollars and let these companies know what we would prefer as a product. All right, now that you've got all the history and for those curious like, is the company viable and are they a solid group of people that are smart and know what they're doing? Well, let's talk about that now. I want to bring that up because someone had suggested, and yes, this is true, they are people who used to work at Ubiquity. This is actually something really interesting. I noticed this is built on a Qualcomm IPQ5018 system on a chip, and that is also similar chips that are used over in building the Unify access points. It's also a bit with open WRT as a base and then customized accordingly. So it works a whole lot like Ubiquity in terms of the base OS and chips they use, which explains why the coverage is so good. The coverage on this, when I had swapped it for about a couple of weeks at my office and even longer at my house here, where my studio is, I, I just didn't have any problems. It worked exactly like it. Matter of fact, to say I had no problems is to say nobody noticed I swapped the Wi-Fi, which is pretty cool. So swapping the Wi-Fi didn't cause all the streaming devices we have, the phones, the computers, etc., to have any issues at all. I just matched the SSIDs and it worked. Now let's jump over to the web interface because I think they did a nice job on this and I'm hoping it's the same web interface we get when they get the local controller going. So let's jump over and take a look at that. Now the devices are extremely easy to adopt, put them in where they need to be, move them around between different sites. Yes, they've got multi-site set up in here. So I have settings for my house, I have settings for my office. You can just hit the pull down here, say LTS office, Tom's house, customize it. They have a site manager, adding new sites, renaming sites. Pretty good start for a base, but there's a few things that make it kind of unfinished. So I can see the IP, MAC addresses, real-time information. We can see the network devices here. There's only one here at my house. I can rename it. You can click on it because this is one thing that was a little bit confusing is where do you change settings on it? Some things are clickable, some things are not. When we actually click the device itself, we get this menu that comes up so we can make more changes. They have kind of a novel way of coloring them, adding colors to group different Wi-Fi access points together in different ways and apply group settings to them. I thought this was pretty Pretty simple the way they did this management vlan fallback upon failure always on no this is kind of a weird one here and i don't know why they defaulted to no chris commented that's the same enabling this will keep the wi-fi broadcasting from this ap even if the internet goes down why would you want that off by default where if you lose internet you suddenly lose connectivity i guess it probably doesn't matter for an average home user because if the internet's not working that's usually the only reason i'm using wi-fi but you know i have local things i'm hosting that if the internet goes down i can still watch things that are locally on my local servers uh, they have the ability to migrate between sites that's nice the wi-fi scanning and the quick scan full scan i can do this without disrupting things that's actually a really nice feature that you can do these scans look at your Wi-Fi and they're using an extra 
unit antenna on there that is not going to take down your Wi-Fi while doing it, and it works really fast. Speed is definitely king here. I'm happy with the way the interface is and it's so responsive, including when you have different devices on your network, they show up here very quickly. Back over to the dashboard, what feels incomplete though is the fact that we have 44 applications of some sort that I can't click on to get more information. They are doing DPI, so I can see that Google Quick is taking up this much, but what for? What devices are using it? Where's the further detail? The Chromecast here is doing something, uploading, downloading, but it doesn't tell me what. This is kind of a weird disconnect in my opinion, but also an opportunity for them to improve where we can see the top applications, but then actually tie them to a device. Now, ideally, this is something that's going to be better suited to your firewall to be able to give you better DPI information, but it's still kind of neat that you have some of this DPI information. But what I do think is very helpful is that you at least have real-time information for each device for the amount of bandwidth that's using. The downside is there's not a lot of cumulative bandwidth because, well, top active devices and we have to go back to the devices and find them, but we can sort some of the traffic TX rates or what channel it's on. You don't really get the history that I click on these and see like a whole DPI history for any of these devices. Back to that would be better suited for a firewall to do, but they have some roads that they're going down, I think, with this that are going to be interesting doing this at a device level and consolidating it all into their dashboard. Now, one thing that's really cool, the killer trick they have is one SSID to rule them all. I think this is a neat feature. What am I talking about? We have the ability to set a password. So if we set the password here, we can save it, but then we can add another password. So we can set another password here and we can add another password. And this is just a really clever way to distinguish what network you belong to with one SSID. I think this is just a really innovative feature. I can't really name other vendors that I have run into where I've seen this feature, but you can now have a single SSID and the password that they go to then gives you the ability and we go down here, we can tag the VLAN, set a data rate for uploads and downloads, have a hotspot schedule. You can even have filtering back to the DPI does allow you to add a filter to this, but the filtering is per SSID, not per network. This is a pretty neat feature that you can say, let's make my guest password this. So this is a guest one. We can apply all those rules here. Uh, this is where my IoT devices go. And I only have to have one broadcasting and that lands them where they need to go. This is really clever. And one thing that, like I said, I just kind of nodded my head going, this would solve quite a few problems for people. And they have some other advanced options if you have some very specific needs that you can do here. My final thoughts on this is this is a really good, not just first gen product that works, but really good product. It's impressive that for first gen, that they got something out that is so complete all the way to market. But this goes, as I said, to the fact that they've hired some really good Ubiquiti engineers and all the conversations I had with them one-on-one -on -one were really engaging and definitely they were listening to the community. So I find it to be a very competent as a company. I am doing this video, as I said in the beginning, not because it's sponsored, but I want to do it after they sent me the devices and I would like to see this company very much succeed. The fact that they're listening to the community and changed their roadmap from when I first talked to them to when I talked to them last that yeah they really want to get that local controller out there. Awesome. I want to see more companies doing that. The device itself works so well. The connectivity I don't have any problems to report. The several weeks it was at my office and the time it spent here at my studio slash house. All the devices worked just as they did when I had them connected to Ubiquiti. I didn't have drops. I didn't have devices that just wouldn't connect or were spotty. The coverage seemed to be exactly the same. Chris from Crosstalk, as like I said, has some speed tests on his review of these. So if you're wondering just how much in performance they are, they're quite similar, but hey, watch this video link down below. Please leave some comments that you'd like them to get that roadmap finished. That's probably going to be a big sticking point for when you decide you'd like to purchase these. But hey, I'm looking forward to more products from the company. They have some network switches that I don't think are available just yet here in June of 2023, but it's on their roadmap as well. I don't know what else is coming in from that company, but hey, if they get these things right, this is something awesome that I'd like to be able to say, hey, here's another competitively priced, locally hosted option that you can choose from a good team of people that are experienced at building good products. So uh, give them a thumbs up for everything they've done so far and 
looking forward to what they do in the future. Leave your comments and thoughts down below because we already know Ulta Labs is reading some of those. So, hey, mention to them that you'd like to see a controller. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content from here. And if you want to connect with me, hit me up on the different socials or head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can have a more in-depth discussion about this and other videos that I've talked about on this channel. And thank you.